So welcome to episode three on our ongoing series where we are building a brand new Flutterflow mobile application in season two of this ongoing course. Now in this particular video, we're gonna have a little introduction to the database tables that we're gonna create for our particular project. And then we're gonna use a fantastic tool that's gonna allow us to create the database file ready to upload to our Flutterflow project. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so let's dive into a really important part of our application, and that is the database. Now, I'm not expecting you to have any kind of skills in databases or anything like that. I'm gonna take this at such a pace that hopefully everything you will be easy to understand for you. So let's talk a little bit about the two database tables that we have with inside our application. So we have our goals and we have our tasks there on the right-hand side. Now you can see here on the left-hand side that we have in our goals table, we have an ID, that's our primary key. So that's gonna be um, kind of a unique unique number for our particular goal. And the, the reason why that's important is, is because what we're gonna do is we're gonna associate the ID with our task. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So you can see here that our goals have a title, a description, they're very self-explanatory, just a piece of text. Then we have number of tasks and number of tasks completed. Now, number of tasks is really just gonna keep track of how many tasks that we have associated with each of our goals. So just like a counter that we're gonna kind of update as, as we add more and more tasks or even delete Tasks, and I'll show you how to implement that in the application. Number of tasks completed, of course, is gonna then keep a track of how many we are gonna have completed. So again, just a number to represent those with inside our goals table. Now our archived is just an indicator here to determine whether one of our goals are archived or not. And of course the UI will be updated to reflect that. And then we've got the status, which is gonna be kind of that little in progress or completed I'm sort of indicated that we also have within this associated with each of our goals and created that will just be our timestamp of when we've actually created the particular goal. Now on the right hand side, of course, we've got tasks, which again, a task has a unique ID. So this again is just going to be that incremental number for every task that we create. We're going to increment that number by one. That's going to be kind of handled for us behind the scenes. Now we've got our title and a description of our task, again, self-explanatory. Complete, again, it's just another indicator to determine whether one of our tasks has been completed or not and then the goal ID is that link between the goals table and the task table and then we've got the created at which again is just our timestamp so that link is there so we've got the ID for our goals table and we've got our goal ID now the key thing to point out here is that each goal will have one or more tasks so that's a really, really important important point just to kind of sort of drill home at this particular early stage. We're not going to do anything complex, nothing more complex than that. And I'll show you how to implement all of this. And of course, if you're building your own applications, you can add more and more tables on and you can link them however you would like. And of course, it'll allow you then to query that with inside the application. So that is our table set up. Let's now move into the next bit where we will then start creating our database. Now, the key thing is to make sure that you have downloaded the tool that I mentioned in the previous section in terms of actually having that installed on your machine is available for Windows and it's available for Mac. So make sure you do get that downloaded. And once you've got that installed, we can then create the actual database. So let's now move on and do that bit now. Excuse the interruption in your learning, but I just wanted to reach out to you to let you know about the Digital Pros No Code Academy. This particular private community is fantastic. It's got all of my training content there, lots of written articles, question and answers, a code library, lots of topics around the no code space and a fantastic community please do check the link in the description it'd be great to have you part of the community okay so here i am up and running then with db browser for sqlite this tool will allow us to create our database file with all of the tables that we need that we can then upload to our flutterflow application so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a brand new database just hit new database here i'm going to pop this onto my desktop and i'm going to give my database and names. So I'm just going to call this one my goals and hit save. Now, what it's now coming up in asking for now is for us ready to create our first database table. So I'm going to type in goals here because that's the first one that we are going to create. And this particular section, it allows us to create all of the fields that we need for 
our table. So the first thing we're going to create and hit add here is ID. Now ID is going to be a number, so we're going to set integer. Now this is going to be not null, so that is going to be one of the constraints that we're going to, it's always going to have a value. It's going to be our primary key, and these particular fields um, we can set if we wanted to here, so this is like an auto increment, so we're going to want to do that. So when we create our very, very first record, it will have an ID of one, and then two, and then three, etc. So we certainly want that. Now up here, this is now going to be a unique, well, we know this number is always going to be a unique here, so we can set a unique there as well, although we won't really be checking for that with inside our application, but it's good to put those constraints on our database table just to prevent any kind of funny business that might be happening um, elsewhere in our application. So that's our ID field created. If we now choose add here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in now our title. Now this is going to be really straightforward because our title is going to be text. Now we could, if we wanted to, we could put these constraints in, but we're not going to put any constraints here for our text. We're Keep, have the freedom with inside our application. So let's add our next one in. So this is going to be a description. Let's just do that's going to be then a text like that. Hit add. Our next one is going to be a number of tasks. Now this is going to be an integer. Now what we can do is we can also give this, if we wanted to, a, a default value of zero. So I'm just going to type in zero there. So it's a very, very first one that's going to be there. Although we'll probably set that with inside our application. Let's just hit add here. Let's do number of tasks completed like that. Again, integer. Again, let's just give this a default value of zero. Let's hit add. Now we want this archived indicator. Now I'm um, typically, um, in if you've been using Flutterflow for a while, you'll know that there is the use of um, sort of Boolean indicators like true or false. Now in in sort of SQLite, you can't actually choose something to be Boolean. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that as integer. So what's going to happen is, is that our archived indicator will be zero to determine that it's not been archived, in, archived or one to determine that it's been archived. So I think what we can do is we can put a default value of zero in here again, we will handle that with inside our application. Next up, let's add our status in there. So just double click on that and type status in. Again, this is just gonna be a piece of text. We can keep all of these switched off here, choose add. And the last one we're just gonna create then is for our timestamp. So created at, and again, this needs to be integer. We don't actually have a data type here where we can set this to be anything other than an integer. So it, it could, for example, you don't have like a date time field as you would have in maybe a, a kind of a, a database or something like that, a, like an like a super base or Firebase or something like that. So we just got that there as integer. And of course, we'll do a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery with inside our application to then kind of convert our date into integers and kind of return those back. And we can then convert that from a number into then a date and time for display on the user interface. So there it is. This is kind of showing you here a kind of like a, a SQL script that will run now. Again, don't really worry too much about the particulars of this, but this is kind of like a, a script that is sort of generated for us here. And when I hit the OK, then that's going to go away and it's going to run that and it's now created our goals table. You can see them all nicely kind of listed there. Okay, so let's now create our task table. Hit the create table. Let's just type in task like that. I'm going to move through this just a little bit quicker because we've just covered some of this here. So our ID is going to be there. It's going to be integer, not null, primary key, auto increment, and it's going to be unique like that. Hit add. Now our task has a title. So let's just put that as a text. Add in then our description of our task. Again, that's just going to be text like that. Hit add. Now this is going to be created at, so we've got a bit of a timestamp there. Uh, we don't really use that with inside our application, to be honest with you, but it's worth sort of just adding it in there so we can keep track if we wanted to of when the, our tasks were created. Just hit the add here. Now this is going to be then our complete status. So again, this is just going to be an integer and I'll just hit add. In fact, we're just going to put a default value of zero in here. Just hit add and then we're going to then need to have our goal ID, which is just going to be then an integer. Now, of course, I could, if I wanted to say that this is not null, we could put the sort of the uh, um, constraints on our database here. So I think that is pretty well much it. We've got everything all created there for us. Just hit OK. And there is our task table all created.
So that's all set up for us. I'm um, really quite straightforward now. We can just kind of, uh, we, we can see here on my desktop, I've kind of got my mygoals.db that's being created. So of course I can then now have that available to me now to the upload to my Flutterflow project. So I think that's pretty well much bit. Uh, we, we, we kind of really done our job with inside this particular tool, but you can explore this tool a little bit more. For example, you can kind of browse the data. You can add data in here if you wanted to before you upload this into into Flutterflow, that's that's okay, but we, we don't need to. We're gonna, inside our application, we're gonna be creating all of this data. We're just purely using this tool to kind of set up the schema of our database and create that database file, which is gonna be very, very important. So that's it, all done. Let's now just move on now to the next section and we'll eventually come back to this where we can then start uploading this into our Flutterflow project. Oh, oh, oh.